Deep in the heart of Kathmandu, Nepal, you'll find a thriving population of Tibetan Buddhists. Here they can freely practice their religion and customs, which were outlawed in Tibet following China's invasion and occupation. This area, called Boda, is famous for what's said to be the world's largest stupa, or monument. As the eyes of Buddha keep watch above, the faithful circle below, reciting mantras and spinning prayer wheels. Around the stupa are several monasteries, the religious centers where Buddhists live and study. And within the walls of the Tarlam Monastery, you'll find one very special student, 10-year-old Asanga Sakya. Halfway around the world, in Seattle, is where Asanga's family lives. Dad Ani, Mom Chimmy, and little sisters Aloki and Mamaki. Now, to understand this strange arrangement, we really need to go back to the beginning. Ani's parents were forced to flee Tibet in the 1950s during the Chinese takeover. In exile, the powerful family continued to practice their own particular school of Tibetan Buddhism, the Sakya tradition. It dates back to the 10th century. Their highly respected teachers, known as lamas, are born into their leadership positions. Their lineage holders by blood. We Tibetans, it's a, it's a tradition to have one of your uh, family members, your offsprings, especially your oldest son, join the monastery. And it's a custom. It's, a, it's an honor to have that. But Ani, raised in the U.S., studied law. And none of his other four brothers became lamas either. Then along came Ani and Chimmy's firstborn, a sangha. Would he be the one to continue the Sakya lineage? It's amazing. Before he was even three, he memorized many texts. When Asanga was just three, the family made a pilgrimage to India and Nepal. The little boy showed an intense interest in everything Buddhist, the holy sites and the rituals. He knew where we were from that prayer, and he would act in such a manner. I mean, you, this is something you would expect of an adult. And he was uh, not only just doing prayers, but making offerings. Then we realized he's not just an, an ordinary Person. Little Asanga even got to meet Tibet's exiled leader, His Holiness the Dalai Lama. I think I met him two or three times. And the first time was in Dharam Salaam when I was three or four years old. Uh, he wanted to see me and, say, and he said, come here. As a son born into this family, Asanga inherited the right to become a spiritual leader, a Lama, and thus continue the Sakya lineage. But the decision to leave home and study in faraway Nepal would have to be up to him. Without his interest, it wouldn't have been possible first. So by the time he was five, we, we asked him if he wanted to continue to this, and he said yes. And so in April of 2005, he came here to the Tarlam Monastery in Nepal to begin his studies as a Sakya Lama. Can you imagine how difficult it must have been for his parents to leave and return to Seattle without him? It, it was terrible. The first time we flew back was the most uh, terrible uh, plane ride I ever had. I cried and cried and cried, and strangely, he, he didn't shed one tear. I think I'm sure inside he was feeling very sad, but I made a huge scene crying, but uh, he didn't shed one tear. He, he just knew that he was doing the right thing. He was so, so more mature and wiser than I was. That first year was extremely difficult. Friends and co-workers questioned Ani and Chimmy's decision. That day, people go, who are you? What are you doing? What are you doing with your son? They think it's ridiculous. How could you do this? There are people who say, who, you know, who ask, what's wrong, you know, like, what's wrong with you leaving your son out there like that? And then there are also people who actually seem to understand. In Nepal, though, this revered leader in the making is hardly alone. Yeah. His eminence, Sakya Dunse Asanga Vajra Rinpoche, has the constant loving attention of three very devoted teachers. You know, so. Here, Asanga is called Rinpoche, a term of respect which means precious. He dispenses blessings from a gilded throne. His private quarters are filled with ornate gifts and treasures. He receives only private tutoring. But it is hardly a cushy life. His highly regimented day starts at 5 a.m. and goes all the way until 9 at night. And then from 7 o'clock to 7.30, I have to uh, do exercise and I do the Manjushri's prayer. Then from 3.15 to 4.30, I study Chinese. And it takes a special person to adapt to it, yeah? 
and he has great stamina. Teacher Martha Ambrose says Asanga studies six days a week, math, science, Chinese, English, religious history, and Buddhist ritual. He's a brilliant student. But I had to ask, was being here his idea or his parents? Um, both of us, but mostly than me. Is he happy here? Mm, I like it here because it's a good monastery and everybody's nice to me and they teach me good. Does he ever want to go back to Seattle? Mm, I don't know about that. I don't think about that so much right now. I'm just thinking about studying more here. And does he miss his family? Miss a little. Not so much. Stoic, reserved, focused, all attributes of a true llama. Yeah. But teacher Martha knows Asanga's other side. Definitely. He has a very silly side. And that's the loving side that I like to bring out and I like to interact with. This is from Seattle, and if you shake it, snow comes. Do you know what that big, tall building is called? That's the space, you know? It has been five years now since Asanga Sakia left home. But he still remembers Seattle, and like any kid, wants to see his old bedroom. It's now pink and houses his two little sisters. This is my yabla, my father. Family members may be far away, but they remain near and dear to Asanga's heart. And certainly one of the year's highlights is their annual visit to Nepal to celebrate his birthday. He always, he was a very mature person to begin with. But each year we see that he's grown more mature and the way he speaks with people, the way he deals with people. When he sees his little sisters, he's back to being a little boy. As soon as he sees them, they just hold, right at the airport, they just hold hands and, you know, lead each other away, play games, and it's like they've never been parted. They only see each other once a year. But every time, Ani and Chimmy ask their son if he wants to stay or come home. You have choices. Are you happy here in Nepal or, or would you like to go back to Seattle? And he is very clear that he wants to continue his studies in Nepal. Asanga's advanced studies will eventually take him on to India. His parents know that he may never return to Seattle. Yet they believe the right decision's been made. We knew that we had to think beyond ourselves, our selfish individual sense, because we knew that we would be so happy to, I mean, who, what father wouldn't want his firstborn or first son and mother as well to, to have that child grow up with him. And I look forward someday to have receiving teachings from him, because he'll be a great, a great scholar, a great teacher, a great leader. But he'll never stop being their little boy, and they'll never stop missing him. I'm so proud of him. That's. I'm so, always so proud of him. And they all hold close this dream of the future. Just being closer to him and um, for him to realize all his uh, goals and to be a great teacher, somebody that all um, Tibetans could be proud of.